Yeah, good evening. This is just a um, sample for um, those that are interested in using uh, randomization uh, for model railroading. Uh, the example I have up here is actually uh, not endorsed by the Waterloo Regional Model Railroad Club that I belong to. However, it is using their data. Uh, it's been something that we've talked about, but uh, um, depending upon the layout and the stage of construction, sometimes it's, it's a little more difficult to uh, actually go about doing than, than uh, applying. Uh, some layouts it might be easier than others. Basically what I have here as I'm going through is an open office sheet which is uh, basically a free version of Excel um, that can be shared out there so if you don't want to have the full version of Excel you can use open office like uh, I'm using here. Uh, the first column here is listing all the trains. Uh, the plan column is basically when uh, uh, trains are planned to come on the duty um, the origin, the destination, uh, the type. Type really doesn't matter so much. Um, percentage here is, uh, is a percentage of how many times that train will be late. And the reason why I came up with those values, um, and they can be adjusted depending upon your situation. Uh, for example, a train from Calgary, I put in a, a late factor that he'll be late 50% of the time, but a train coming out of Sudbury would be 5 um, you don't really want to randomize things that happen on your layout uh, through the course, like um, actually having uh, crews that uh, you don't have enough crews, or um, you certainly don't want to use uh, bad uh, um, bad standards like uh, derailments and stuff like that as uh, as an excuse. Well, there's your randomization. Uh, the key is you shouldn't be having those uh, kind of issues, uh, few and far between, if possible. This is to simulate what happens before the train actually becomes live on your on your uh, layout. Uh, the next one here uh, is, it says uh, in, on column G it says S, uh, yes or no. Uh, that's a flag that I put in there for serial staging. The important thing is if you're going to randomize what time a train will actually come on duty, you have to make sure he's accessible. Otherwise, you could be delaying other trains. Now, these numbers are actually pretty, uh, the late factors are actually pretty low, and I'll get into that. The frequency doesn't matter. Uh, the next two are random values. Eventually, I'm going to hide them for now. I'm showing them just to see, say, what's going on. And as you can see, uh, these other two columns that go 0 and 1 basically uh, indicate that there is going to be some type of delayed effect, uh, particularly this column. What you do and you can set it up any way uh, you want. You have to get used to uh, different uh, functions, read up on Excel a little bit. If you're not computer literate, uh, um, you can take samples such as, as these uh, uh, that are provided by myself and others and uh, use them in your own situations. And uh, uh, in the future, I'll be happy to provide such uh, uh, examples as well. I have some on my website as well. But anyways, what you want to do Everything right now is auto calculate. Every time you do a copy and a paste, it's going to auto calculate, which basically means it's going to roll the dice and all those random numbers are going to change. So, what you want to do is you want to highlight by holding down the shift button, select all these times. I know this may sound complicated, but trust me, once after a while, it gets very easy. Control C and Control, okay, Control C to copy. So, you're copying those values. And over here, now we got one train that, out of all of them that's going to be late. Everything else uh, at the moment for the call times will be on time. Control Shift V. This will come up. Usually it'll show everything. You want to just make sure the only thing that's highlighting is date and time. What Control Shift B, V does, V is in Victor, is it pays special as opposed to Control V. You don't want to copy the formula. This is a way to prevent uh, Excel or Open Office from recalculating. So basically, once you put it in here, it's going to stay in here until you actually go in and delete it. And I'll show you that later. So you hit OK. And there we go. Now, as you can see, I said there was one train that was late. Everything uh, so far, uh, what we mean by sheet is basically the, call, uh, the, um, uh, the train sheets, such as these down here, lineup of trains. I have, uh, there's two here that was borrowed from the club for car chain webwood subs. 
Uh, they actually auto update as well, but uh, I don't have all the function functionality in them set up yet, but you can take them from these values. So that's that's great. So basically what's happening is the only difference that we see right here, uh, if you notice, is train 974. He um, is the only train out of all of the trains in the entire system when those sheets are printed up that is late due to due to that. Now it's changed. Those random numbers have changed, but as you can see, it doesn't affect here. This is different than that because 2143 was what that first rule of the dice gave us, and that's the number we're going by. The next columns is what I call lost and gain. Each um, list of sheets are done at midnight. Um, a lot of railroads actually use the same basically printout lineups. Uh, some do it uh, every eight hours. Uh, for our purposes, we do it on a 24-hour 24 uh, 24 cycle for each session. Um, basically, usually that's good enough to get a lineup of everything that's going to be happening in the session. What you want to do is this gives a two-phase two approach. Number one, it gives you a, a different time to put on the sheets. So we know that the train that is coming uh, from Cartier has been delayed for whatever reason. Everybody else appears to be on time as per plan. But the lost and gain, as you can see, there's a lot. Now that represents a 24 hour period. Uh, that doesn't mean he's gonna lose three hours and 22 minutes. This means he would lose three hours and 22 minutes uh, within a 24 hour period. But this all changes depending upon what time he actually shows up we go in here again see the green at the top this means that's something that you're going to actually copy over control C again and control uh, shift V again hit enter okay so basically uh, now I'm gonna get rid of these here uh, just for the sake of like loss and gain, that's something that you don't actually have to see. So I'm going to hide those. This is what the dispatcher would actually be working with. He doesn't even worry about these random values. I wanted to put them in there just so you know where the data is coming from. But uh, basically on the sheet, as you can see here, he's actually uh, a minute earlier. Not a big deal. Um, as you can see, normally he shows up at 9 o'clock, the Montreal train, but uh, he's uh, made some incredible headway and uh, is actually uh, now here at 827. On the uh, exception of that, the Calgary to Toronto train, because it's midday from when the sheets were uh, printed, he's actually delayed quite a bit and he's actually delayed uh, past the 12 o'clock mark here. So they're not no longer in order. You want to make sure things are in order to make sure as far as if, if trains are coming out as particular staging, everything is fine. So he's going to actually be delayed uh, um, by about uh, an hour and a half coming out of Calgary. And that's because of this 50% value of the random factor uh, going in. He's actually a little bit earlier, the train that came from Toronto. Things uh, not too bad, everything else. Um, Another train that came from Toronto, 25 minutes, like uh, that would be the Perry Sound sub, uh, and basically it means everything's going good. So that gives you a different approach so that what you have on the sheet and what actually happens at the time of actually calling a crew may mean that a train might be arriving a little bit earlier or he might be a little bit later than you originally expected. Now, the next is what we'll go into uh, briefly here because of YouTube. I'm going to assume four hour call times. These on and um, on s time uh, is situation. So he comes on at uh, zero o'clock or zero hundred, I should say. And we're going to assume he's going to he's going to be in there for four hours. So nothing's happening uh, between zero and zero thirty here. These are random time values for uh, basically situation cards for those who are familiar except this is a more computerized version. So another train comes on at 030 and 212 is coming up and notice these keep changing so next train that would come on duty would be at 2 o'clock so now we have three trains on duty. 
again everything gets shuffled. Five o'clock as you can notice would be the next train that comes on duty but before five o'clock happens this will get your attention right there. Situation one train uh, time of 0447 so if you go 20 0447 yes a situation card was pulled and this also keeps the dispatcher the reason why you go with the computer with the situation cards is people if you if you use situation cards quite a bit you actually get used to the times and you actually get used to the situations what this does is if the dispatcher keeps uh, everything going in check uh, it'll actually surprise him because he only had within uh, a half an hour from about four o'clock on the fast clock and all that is is a basic radio check no delay and uh, so at this time nothing else is happening it's already past 121 so you don't have to worry about that so he's off duty say at four o'clock and 430 will come around and there's nothing going on actually there's one at 436 but he he gets out he doesn't have to worry about it because he came off duty at 430 let's say there is no delay for him he would be off duty say at six but the next one to come on duty is at five o'clock and <clears throat> excuse me so with no further delays he should be done at six o'clock and the and of course this is happening throughout a, a long session so somebody like a dispatcher or somebody who's got some available time and i i mean it's an added position, it's an added uh, clerk position, but it actually adds to the realism if, if people want to do this. Um, 6.30 uh, would be the next uh, train to come on. Actually, before 6.30, we got a 5.05. So once again, another situation comes up. 21.05.05, and you got an undesired emergency. Now, how many of these you get... Uh, can actually deter a system. What I'm going to do is after the end of the night, I'm going to show you. Uh, basically, you'll get a couple of these, uh, and I'm running out of time. So, once you're done the night, you basically go through, delete all these, just hit the delete key, so you can start fresh with a new one. Only in the green areas. You can copy from the other areas, but you're only going in the green areas. Now, as you saw, undesired emergency came up, and there was a delay that came with that uh, because of an air hose. Here's all the situations. As you can see, I have a hundred of them. If you really find that you're getting too many of too many undesired emergencies, I've got ten of them. So ten out of a hundred, if there is a situation, mind you, it has to meet the time restraints. Uh, you can adjust all of these. A lot of these are report person on property crossing malfunction, reduced to half speed. Uh, you can make a thousand of these uh, if you want to spend the time in copying and pasting. Uh, it just takes um, basically to go in here and uh, as you can see the the formula here is I3 times a hundred. What you want to do is change that to a thousand. That'll give you a, a random number between one and one thousand. So uh, that basically um, is an introduction as to what you can do with uh, open office and Excel uh, as far as randomization and it really uh, uh, can add some nice uh, random factors to your operation.